Hey everyone, this is Mukesh Otwani once again from learn-innovation.com. Today in this video, we are going to talk about PyTest in detail. Okay, so if you are completely new to PyTest, then don't worry, we will be starting from the scratch. And in this video, we are going to talk about so many things. Okay, so first of all, we will talk about what exactly is PyTest, why do we need it, okay, then how do we install PyTest in local system, how you can create your first test using PyTest, how you can create multiple tests using PyTest. We'll also talk about some rules that you need to follow while working with PyTest. And once you understand the rules, we will see how we can use the, uh, you know, different flags which comes along with PyTest. So once you understand how we run a single test, multiple tests, then we'll also talk about how you can use PyTest to run your complete test suite also. Okay. So when we talk about flags, we'll talk about few very important flag clips, which is hyphen K, hyphen R, A, hyphen Q, hyphen S and hyphen V and so many flags we have. These are very small flags. I would say very uh, powerful, but that depends on your usage. You can, you know, modify them. You can use whenever it's required. Once you understand the basic flags, we will talk about some very important part in PyTest called markers. Okay, we'll also talk about the fixtures in detail. Along with all these details, we'll also talk about pytos.ini file, how you can take advantage of this configuration file, how you can create it, and what other things you can use it. We'll also talk about some uh, very interesting part like how you can create JUnit report or I'll say JUnit.xml file which is a report in XML format which you can again use for further reporting. We will also see how you can create HTML reports using PyTest. You don't need to write any code, it is just we have to install some plugins and you can generate beautiful HTML reports as well. Once you understand all of this, we'll also talk about uh, you know how you can parameterize your test because in real time, we don't hard code this uh, details, right? So we generally parameterize these details so that you can run with different set of data. So that is also we will see. And a very interesting part, how you can run your test case in parallel mode. Okay, so let's say you want to distribute your test into different, I will say threads of the sub processes, how you can use this pair test, we will see in detail. Again, coding wise, you don't have to write code much. It's just as we know that pair test is a framework already. You just need to understand few syntaxes, few flags, few markers and fixtures and you will be able to do it. When it comes to parallel and generating reports, you just need to install two additional packages and you will be able to use. Okay, and uh, throughout this session, we will also talk about how you can run the PyTest from the command prompt from the PyCharm and how you can customize and you can, how you can change the configurations as well. So it's going to be a little lengthy video, but trust me, after watching this complete video, you will have a good understanding about how PyTest works and what are the different features we have. Okay, so still the, uh, watch this video till the end because we will be discussing all of this that I have mentioned here and I hope you will enjoy this video. So in case if you are new to this channel, please make sure you subscribe to this channel, share with your friends and let's continue with PyTest. So before we jump into actual tutorials, let's understand what exactly is PyTest, why do we need it, okay, and what are the advantages of using this framework. So let me first of all show you the official site, okay, just type PyTest and hit enter and you will get their official site which is pytest.org and here you will get everything okay which includes like how to install the content or I will say APIs, examples, everything and now if you just see the first line it says pytest is a framework which makes it easy to write small tests yet scale to support complex functional testing for application and library okay looks little complex uh, definition right so let me break it down what exactly is PyTest. So basically PyTest is a framework, okay. When I say framework, it has, I will say a couple of classes or I will say a couple of methods and decorators and so many things which will help you to organize your code, okay. So basically we will be having a couple of features when we start using this framework. So this framework will make our task a little easy, okay. Now I will tell you what exactly why we need this first of all and then we will jump into again what exactly is PyTest. Now consider a scenario that you are writing your Selenium test right. You are writing simply opening browser, doing some activity, you are closing the browser right. And like this you are creating a couple of tests for your regression test scenarios. Now suppose you want to run your test cases in parallel mode okay. Suppose you want to run your test in parallel mode or you want to run you know set of test cases or I will say a simple group of test cases okay 
or you want to write certain conditions that if this conditions is true then only run this test or maybe you want to write or generate some kind of automation report right now if I ask you to do this from the scratch again you have to write everything from the scratch right you need to write your own library you need to write the custom code in order to implement this right what if I say that there is already available inside a framework it means already a set of people have written this kind of framework for you where you can simply use this framework and you can achieve all of this it is just few of the features I have noted down okay but once we start using PyTest you will get to know how easy and flexible this PyTest is and it can, it can fulfill all your need okay so now basically PyTest is a framework which can run your test in parallel mode okay it can run the same thing like it can run a test suite for you or I will say a set of test cases for you depends on your need set of test cases it can also give you features that you can have some kind of preconditions and post conditions okay let's say before you start your test you want to do some activity and you want to do some kind of uh, cleanup activities as well right which is I will say post conditions so you can easily do this in PyTest using fixtures you can also put a condition that when you want to skip your test cases when you want to fail your test cases and how do you want to generate a report and so many things so PyTest is going to do all these things for you with the help of just a small library which is PyTest fine and good thing about PyTest is completely open source it means you don't need to say a ping, uh, pay a single penny and you can start using it okay so let me show you how exactly it works what are the features advantages how and how it can help you in your automation fine so again if you go to their official website you will get to know how to install everything but let me show you one by one and um, if you see here couple of features which they have highlighted that you can use their assert statement okay you can also use the test uh, discovery or I will say auto discovery where it will find automatically how many test cases you have and it will run and very important part you can parameterize your test because when you start working in real time right you will not hard code anything you will parameterize that whenever somebody have to run and with different parameters you can do that so again you don't need to write the code it has one fixture called parameterize so you can do this either with fixtures or marker that I will show you and you can do the parameterization as well and yes it has a couple of more features that we are going to dis, uh, discuss one by one okay again if you are interested about PyTest in detail they have a very good documentation so I will give you all this link in the description and you just go through it again it's a very uh, good library definitely we will not be using all of them we will be only using which is required for our test automation yeah but in case if you want this is a very descriptive guide they have please go through it and you can start using it so the first thing that we need to do we need to install PyTest right so how do we install again how we have installed the previous library exactly in the same way we just need to say okay let's go here and click on install we just need to say pip install hyphen u and pytest and it it will install pytest for you okay so let me show you one by one and uh, let me open my pycharm and let me create one uh, package here so that i can keep all my example in this package i will say uh, pytest devos okay now before we start let's install so I will just go here I will copy paste or you can just go here to your PyCharm now you can use command prompt or you can use this terminal just type pip install and pytest it will take few seconds and it will install all the dependencies everything and you can start using it so it says successfully installed pytest at the time of recording pytest version is 6.2.2 for you in case if you are watching this video at a later stage you might get a different version that's okay you can continue with the latest version fine now before we start writing our first PyTest or I will say first test using PyTest you need to understand few rules okay so let me show you or maybe I will show you that rules first 
so let's create our first python file okay i will give this file name as test underscore first okay i'm i will tell you why i'm adding test at the rate because now when you start working with pytest you need to follow one rule that whatever classes or methods that you want to run as part of test cases it has to start or it has to end with test underscore okay so i will note it down let's say if your test case is uh, test one it will not detect so you need to write test underscore and then you can write one so either you can use test underscore at the beginning or you can write at the last but this test has to be added then only pytest will be able to detect or it has it can identify your test cases same thing will be applied for your class also or i will say your python file so i will just note it down that pytest will run all the files okay all files now you need to also understand the directories okay because in few seconds i will show you or in few minutes i will show you how pytest will detect all your test cases from the current directory or its subdirectory it will run okay so python will run all the files from your current directory and i will say subdirectories as well okay it will only pick if your test includes test underscore at the beginning and you can continue with whatever name you want to give so i will just give star here so test underscore whatever name you want to give or you can simply start uh, with any name but make sure it should end with at the rate test dot py file that is the only rule as of now you need to remember fine so let me show you uh, let me clear this and let me just keep it here so let's write our first test i will write def and i will say test underscore one and i will simply write one print statement as of now or maybe i will just use two variables okay i will say x equal to 10 and y equal to 20 and i will just use one assert okay so assert x equal to equal to y that is my first test now how do i run this as a pi test there are two ways okay so either you can just type pi test or you can write pi dot test and give the file name so right now you can see i am under python tutorials but i have to navigate till pi test demos right so i will say cd i will say pi test demos hit enter and now we are already here now i will write pi test and hit enter the moment you hit enter as you can see pytest has automatically detected that you have only one test because of this test underscore and since now this assert is failing what we are checking if x equal to equal to y then pass my test otherwise fail my test definitely in this case it should fail so now it is failing and if you see here so let me scroll and uh, let me show you from the beginning so as you can see the moment i say pytest it says test session started now it is taking the root directory which is our pytest demo then it is checking all the plugins that we have now this is the main part it collected one item okay which is one test and you can see f means failed 100 percent test executed so 100 percent and this is just a failure that this is the statement which is causing the issue and assert has been failed fine so this is the test summary that this is your first file which is test underscore first dot py test underscore one and finally it took 0.22 second which is less than a second right now let me do one thing let me simply make it true i will say if x equal to equal to y which is true in this case and let me run this again and you can see it executed and this time it passed rest everything is same now you can see a small dot operator right this is in green color it means it's a pass so you need to remember dot if it is in green it's pass if it is failed as we have seen it shows failed here right now let me write one more test okay so again i will say def test underscore two okay pair of parentheses colon and this time i will say suppose i have a name and this name is i will say selenium okay and let's say i have my title and i will say 
this title includes selenium is for web automation okay now i let's say again i want to do a assert here so i will say assert uh, name in title so what i am expecting this name should be available in this title right now notice guys i have not i have not made any changes right i just added one more test the moment i run by test now it has detected automatically two items because of this test underscore so it collected two items and you can see again two dot means both passed let me fail this forcefully this time i will make this as a small s and let me run this again so this time one failed which is expected and one passed so you can see assertion error assert selenium in this so it is not able to verify selenium in this particular string right now if you scroll up you will see again all details right this test has been failed and collected two items so let me uh, make it pass again and let me write one more test okay the reason i am writing multiple tests because i want to run uh, as a test suite also which i will show you in few seconds so again let's say i have one more string and this time i will say jenkins fine and again if i say one more thing called title and i will say jenkins is ci server now again i will say assert uh, name in title now this time i also want to pass one additional argument this is now additional argument i'm passing which me, which will only get printed if this assertion fails okay i will say uh, title does not match in case this this assertion is failing this message will also get displayed okay so let me make this as j small so ideally two tests should pass right and this test 3 should fail so again let's run now as i mentioned you can either use pi.test or pytest this time i'm using pi.test hit enter and as expected two passed one failed and you can see guys this is additional argument which i was passing right title does not match it is printing here and if you just scroll up you will see same thing right two dot which is two pass and one failed perfect very easy to use now let me show you one important part here let's say uh, what exactly is happening right now it is only giving you information about the failed test cases right so what if i want some additional uh, like i want the information about the past test also you just need to write uh, pi test or pi dot test use hyphen r and use a capital a hit enter so you can see it is giving you okay as per the previous results now it is also giving you summary of the past test cases also so what this exactly r a i will show you how to get this flags a means all so by default it will only show you about the failed test cases but uh, when you say hyphen r a it means you said all so it will give information about all the test cases two passed and one failed it's very easy to use right now let me do one thing let me create one more uh, file and this time I, again i will say it's test underscore second okay so again i will be writing uh, test underscore let's say login and here i will say login to application clear second uh, I will say this is checkout and I will say checkout from the application or just say checkout. I'm just writing some dummy statements. Later on, we will uh, write some actual code. First, we need to understand how exactly the spy test works. Okay. And then I will say log out from the application. So, what exactly I did? I just created another Python file. I created three more tests. And this time, if you see, I'm not making any changes. Right now, I'm under the same directory. The moment I say hyphen R capital A, can you see? It identified all the six test cases. So five plus one, six, three from this file, three from this file. 
So now if you come back here, you will see PyTest will run all the files from the current directory or subdirectory which matches with this pattern. Clear enough? Now I showed you hyphen R, right? So what exactly these flags are? Let me show you. So if you want to know about these flags, so either you can go to their official site or you can simply just come back to Google and type PyTest flags, okay? The moment you say uh, PyTest flags, you will see this section, right? Where you just say PyTest hyphen H or hyphen hyphen L and you will get all the details. So let me show you. I will just type PyTest hyphen hyphen help or just hyphen H and you can see we got all these uh, information. So let me scroll up. Just a second. Let's have a devil in the I will say help document. The moment you say hyphen hyphen help, so you can see the usage that you need to always start with PyTest. Then you can give all your options. Then whatever files or directory that you want to uh, scan. So now if you can see hyphen K when we will be using this when you have to run the test which matches the given expression which I will show you in few minutes. Then you can say then we hyphen and M for marker or hyphen hyphen M markers then hyphen X and all these flags. Okay, so I will keep on adding these kind of flags whenever it's required. And uh, you can see here we also have these right for reporting. So basically I use this hyphen R and I use this capital A hyphen RA. So basic, basically it will show you the, all the summary. So when I say a hyphen or uh, when I say capital A, it is listing all. But let's say you want only uh, failed, then you can say hyphen RF, hyphen RE, hyphen RS and so on. And this is very interesting point that by default, if you don't mention, you are getting the result right. If, let me show you. Okay, I will show you. So by default, it shows small f and capital E. A small f means it will show you only the failed and error. Rest everything will be depends on your requirement. So I use hyphen re. In the same way, if you see all these flags, you will get. Okay, I will keep on adding based on the requirement. But yeah, they have very interesting uh, help document. So if you come down further. They have also mentioned that if you want to know the markers and the fixtures which is available, you just need to say PyTest hyphen hyphen markers hyphen hyphen fixtures. So once we move ahead, we will be discussing about marker and fi fixtures as well. But let me show you this list Python, sorry, PyTest hyphen hyphen markers. And you can see we got this markers as well, right? So if you scroll up. So these are the markers available. How you can use it, when to use what, we will see. So you can say, you can see here, this is how we have to use. We need to use at the rate pietas dot mark. Then you can say dot fog dot skip dot skip if x fail and so on. So it's an interesting one which we will see. Let's quickly also see the fixtures. Okay, and you can see we got the fixtures as well, right? All these fixtures that we can use with our PyTest. Fine, so it's not the right time, but still I showed you in case if you're interested, you can explore more from your end. So let me show you one by one. Let me clear this. I will just say CLS. So suppose I have one file, second file. In each file, I have certain test cases, right? But right now, I got a requirement that I don't want to run test underscore first. I just want to run test underscore second. In that case, you can simply say that, yes, I just want to run test underscore second dot py file. In that case, it will only give you or it will only run three test cases from the second file. So you can see three dots, it means three passed. Since I haven't mentioned about hyphen R capital A, it is not showing, but let's add it. And you can see we got summary as well. Now suppose in third one also, uh, in this file, you just want to run 
only the login test okay so let's say i just want to run this login part how can i do that so now there's one flag which i showed you right hyphen k here you can simply give a string if this string matches with uh, any of the test case it will execute in our case we are saying that go to this particular file and only run which has a keyword or which contains login it should run so let's hit enter and you can see one pass because we just added in this file we have two more test cases which got deselected okay so it's working fine now what if i remove this so what exactly i'm saying scan my current directory run all the tests which have the login so ideally we have only one test right because in this file we have test underscore one and underscore two and three here if i just run it so you can see it scanned both the files total number of test cases was six five deselected only one passed so that is how we can use hyphen k okay so once you move ahead you will remember all these flags so don't worry as of now there is also one more uh, flag called verbose okay so the moment you use hyphen v and you will see you are getting some more information now so if you just notice if i don't use this hyphen v and just see we are getting less information right but the moment i use hyphen v verbose okay we are getting some additional information as well and uh, if i simply remove this login as well so that it should show you everything so this is the short summary and uh, this was the standard output that we added right print statement so log into application check out log out from the application this is coming basically from this file okay and yeah short summary five test cases passed one failed now let's clear everything now suppose you want to um okay let me just note it down first of all whatever we have seen so first of all hyphen r capital a but you can use any other flag so in case if you want all the information just type pytest hyphen h or pytest hyphen hyphen help then we have used hyphen k where you can simply uh, provide a string or an expression if this match it will run all the test which includes or which matches with this string then we have also seen uh, just now yeah hyphen v for verbose so it will give some more information and by default when you don't provide it takes uh, by default as f which is for fail and e for errors so this is what we are doing from the command prompt okay what if i want to run directly from my pycharm then how can we do that okay so as you can see right now i'm getting this option right i can execute a specific test let's say when i execute i'm getting this result right this is a test name which is test underscore logout this is the file right and this is just a test result so what if you want to do the same thing from the terminal oh, sorry from the pycharm so by default you will not be getting this okay you need to do a small changes so by default you will not be able to see this okay so how you can get this let me show you step by step but before we move ahead i just want to show you that for python we have also unit test just type unit test python and you can see we have a unit testing framework also in python apart from that if you just type nose python the nose is also a framework for okay unit testing so unit test comes by default okay you don't need to install it the moment you install python unit test also comes uh, along with python and basically it is inspired from the junit so all the features that you have in junit you will find uh, in unit test as well we also have a nose okay which is again a testing framework and it extend all the features or i will say the standard features from junit the one which we are using is pytest right so it has more features and it is more flexible plus we have more features as compared to unit test and nose so let me show you how you can do that so click on file click on settings 
and you can see we have this option called project which this this is our project python tutorials so when you expand this you will see two options python interpreter and python interpreter from here so it's up to you how do you want to go so you can see here we have list of packages right so click on the plus icon and search for pytest so you can see this is a pytest and they also have another packages which is for for different purposes so once you move ahead we will be using some other pytest packages as well for the time being you just need to use pytest and uh, in case if you want any specific version you can do that you can see right now we are using pytest 6.2.2 which is taken by default click on install package okay and it will take a uh, few seconds now let me show you an interesting point let's close everything let's create a new python file this time when you create a python file you can select this unit test okay so right now i was selecting python file the moment you click on unit test you can give a uh, test underscore three okay hit enter and you can see i'm getting predefined class right which is my test case then it is extending or i will say it is inheriting another class called test case class which is coming from unit test and you can see as i mentioned by default in python you will be getting unit test and this is how the unit test runs so in case if you want to run just run unit test for test underscore three and you can see it is running my test and it is failing right so this is how unit test work uh, which is predefined in build with python which we are not using but the reason i showed you because by default or i will say when you don't set this this is set to default which is unit test but i want by default all my tests should run with pytest okay once you're done let's create a new file now and let's do one thing let's click on python file and i will set test underscore four okay and uh, again i will write test underscore and this time i can just say response code okay i just want to see the response code of some api and i just want to print something that uh, api working fine don't worry about the code guys understand the principles okay once you understand how pytest work you can implement with api mobile web automation even for your code unit testing as well just click here and click on edit configuration and you can see by default uh, you can see the unit test which is coming right so let's click on python test and click on this plus icon and you can see it is asking you what kind of new configuration you want to add okay so in our case we want to add new configuration for pytest so click on pytest and now you can see it will bring up this window so as you can see it's giving us the warning the target not provided okay makes sense because right now we need to provide the target as well so click on this target and uh, inside this you can select pytest working directory okay uh, where we are writing about us right now so this is pytest demos and working directory also you can set the same pytest demos and we're good to go so basically target and working directory click on apply and click on ok now you will see this option so the moment you right click you will also get this option now run pytest for and you can see whatever things we were running from terminal now we are able to see here as well correct so let's say one more thing i will create one more test here and i will say test response code here i will say 200 and here i will say 400 not working i'm just giving some again dummy name dummy statement just to make understand that how multiple tests won't run and the moment you run this okay you can see still one is running because i also have this flexibility now that let's say if i want to run this i can run a specific test i can run this specific test and if i want to run all i can select anywhere not here and not here somewhere in the uh, file and then i say run by test in that case it will run both fine so basically we have seen 
how to run from the terminal how to run from your PyCharm editor okay uh, but generally this is only uh, required when you are working locally right when you are creating tests when you're debugging but then when you start working and when you start running a test on the CI you need to run everything from the terminal right you just need to trigger this command pass the flags and it should work so I generally don't prefer configuring using uh, PyCharm or Eclipse because this is only for our debugging creation but the end we have to run from here so let's do one thing let's run once again right now i have four files each file have multiple test cases and let's say what is the output total number of test cases nine seven passed and two failed fine and now let me show you again a very interesting flag called junit xml okay so first of all what you can do just write pytest then i can write hyphen r capital a now you need to use one very interesting flag called j unit xml so what it will do whatever results you will be getting it will dump all the result into one xml file okay so let's say i just want to say report one dot xml and let's hit enter so it will run all the test right and it should generate one okay just a second yeah one xml file as well yeah you can see so once everything is done once your test is done it is generating one xml file for you this xml file you will find inside the current working directory which is pytest demo in our case and you will get report one dot xml so if you just refresh it should work and you can see we got this report 1.xml let's open this with any of the browser let's say i want to try an edge browser or maybe i will show you in a default editor so click on show in explorer my system is little slow today just second yeah so this explorer is open this is our working directory right we have written all these files so this report one uh, report one dot xml file is ready and it is trying to open here also in edge browser it's again very slow so let me show you yeah it's displayed here can you see this is again the results in xml format now if you try to read this uh, okay it's not that attractive but i will tell you why we need this and then i will show you how you can generate the html report okay so first of all you can see we have a parent tag called test feeds tag and it is ending here okay maybe i can show you in this format okay so by default this is the parent tag test feeds inside this test suites we can have multiple test suite so this is basically a name which you can change it and you can see other details total number of failure number of test total time it took timestamp and this is my host name okay which is this is string the moment you open this you can see now we have test cases right and if you open this these test cases are working so this is the actually class name so if you go back here test underscore first right so test underscore first have three tests test one test two and test three since test three is failing for that you can see we also have one tag called failure which includes the message and all the details in a similar way you will find all these files right and the respect to test cases if some tests will fail it will also add this now the question comes why we need this basically whenever you have to create some custom reports and you need some kind of data which you can showcase in your report you can just dump all the data into this xml file and whenever you need any specific data you can read this xml file and you can generate your own report okay now in case if you want default report which generate which is generated by pytest it's very very easy okay i will show you how you can generate the html report as well so for that you just type python sorry pytest 
and just type HTML. Just a second, PyTest HTML report. That's all. You will find a package called PyTest hyphen HTML. That's all. So just copy this, come back here, open your terminal and paste it here. Hit enter and it will install this package. I already have. So it says requirement already satisfied. In your case, it will take few seconds. It will install this and you are good to go. Now, how do we use it? Again, as I mentioned, you need to follow the documentation. The moment you click here on documentation, you just need to use one flag and you will be able to use it. Okay. So the moment you click on user guide, can you see this? Just use one flag called hyphen hyphen HTML and you need to provide the HTML file name. Cool. So I will do the same. Just type PyTest. It should pick all my tests. Then I just want hyphen R capital A. In case if you don't want, you can ignore this. Okay. So let's keep it simple. I will just keep hyphen hyphen HTML equal to uh, my HTML report dot HTML. And let's run this. So again, same thing. Two failure, seven passed. This time, when I click here, can you see this? My HTML report dot HTML. The moment I open this in any of the browser, you should get a detailed report. And here we go. So now, if you try to see, it says same Java underscore home, which packages we are using, which platform, default plugins. Python version total summary nine tests ran in the second. This will change when you start running your real test. Now this is some of the checkbox. Let's say you want to have uh, you know detailed test which includes error script. You can check and check this by default right now. We have only two checkbox enabled. Okay, total if you want to see only seven uh, past test cases. These are the list. In case if you want to add failed also, you can just select this. And this will show you the test three failed and this is how you'll get the real this belongs to this file and this is the test case name fine in the same way this is coming from another file and this is what we're getting a session error so you can see that is the advantage of using this pipe test right if you if i tell you that you need to write everything from the scratch you might take weeks or months to implement all of this but since pipe test is a predefined i will not predefined defined by or created by a set of people we are using it and we are writing our test okay so this is just a very basic example that i'm showing you so slowly we will be using markers we will be using fixtures and we will also discuss few additional flags that can help us while building our test uh, i will say test framework okay so this report is very basic okay suppose you want to have a little advanced report okay then yes you can do that as well so you can you must have seen allure report right so the moment you type allure report uh, python okay and you will see here a very intuitive report which can be easily done with uh, python as well okay so just a second yeah you can see this kind of reports you will be getting it okay so we'll talk about this earlier report as well but yeah since this is a very easy one we don't have to use much just add one flag and you will be able to see your report as well so i hope it is clear now if it is clear then let me move forward to the next topics called markers fixtures and so on so now let's continue with the markers okay so till now whatever we have seen okay we have seen the different flags now let's talk about a marker so what you need to do just search pytest and search for markers the moment you hit enter you will see their first official site right official link which is working with custom markers so they have given couple of examples as well so in so if i show you the different markers which is available so you can run this command either from pycharm terminal or you can run from the cmd as well just search for pytest space hyphen hyphen markers okay the moment you hit enter you will get the list of markers which already pytest having so you can see they have filter warning skip skip if x fail parameterize use fixtures try first and try last so these are custom marker which is coming from pytest but you can also design your own markers 
so what exactly is marker is marker is like you are giving some additional information about your test you can mark a test function with custom metadata for example you are running some selenium test let's say you are running api test mobile test so you can create a custom mark and while running you can also mention which test function you want to run okay so they have already mentioned how you can run it and we need to use one flag called hyphen m so let me show you how does it work for this i will create another file and uh, let's see how does it work so let me create a python file and uh, here i will just give test markers demo fine so let me create a function here and i will say this is test underscore let's say login scenario then here i will just add some print statement and i will say login done okay i'm just giving some dummy method or dummy functions i'm creating but once you start you can use the real examples you can use the real name once you understand how does it how this works then it's totally up to you how do you want to use it after login i just want to make the payment let's say i just want to add few product then i want to just log out so these are three test function that we are written so i will say add products and just say log out done so now in order to use in order to use this marker you, now you need to import pytest so just type import and just say pytest fine now you can use decorator so now you just say pytest dot and you can see we have a marker available right so you just say mark the moment you put dot again you can see these are the available markers right use fixtures parameters skip if skip x fail i will show you all of this not all of this but yeah which is useful so let's create our own marker okay so i will say this is my smoke scenario so i'm just writing dot smoke fine and let's say this also belongs to a smoke scenario so i will just create our own marker and i will say at the rate pytest dot mark dot smoke fine and let me create one more marker this i will say this is regression fine now if you want to run this either you can run from the terminal so if i just um, run this i will say pytest what is the file name test underscore marker demo so test underscore markers demo dot py now in order to run this mark you need to use hyphen m okay and now you can give let's say i just want to run smoke marker which is just a smoke scenarios the moment you hit enter you will see it will only run the test which has marker smoke so basically this had three test cases right so only two passed because of this is smoke because first and the last have this smoke marker it has not executed the regression similarly okay just let me remove this yeah if i simply want to run regression i will just mention regression so in this case is totally opposite in this case it only executed this test case and two has been deselected now if you just notice you will see this warning okay it says unknown pytest.mark.smoke is this a typo you can register the custom marks to avoid this warning so if you open this link so basically these are the built in markers which we have right so what we did we created our own markers so what pytest says that in case if you have your own markers you can register them in this ini file i will show you this file how does it work so whatever we have seen till now we can register all of them inside pytos.ini file okay which i will show you in few seconds or few minutes now let's say i just want to give and in or condition so is this possible yes so in double quotes you can give the condition that i just want to run a smoke or regression right so in this case smoke or regression so it should execute all the tests because or is like either this or this so in our case all three are matching so it says three passed now can i give end so the moment you say end and this time you will see all has been de deselected because 
it is looking for and condition which is not true in our case so basically you can use and and or as well if you have custom markers now let's try to understand this warning first and then we'll go to the next mark so as per the documentation we need to create a file and here we can mention our all the markers right so you can copy this and inside your project current working directory this is our directory so this is actually a python package that we created or you can keep inside current working directory as well so let's create a file and give this file name is pytos.ini hit enter so now let's follow this first of all we need to write pytest okay so let's mention the pytest and then you can just give markers and you can give all the markers fine so let's do one thing let's copy these markers so i will just copy this so that we should not make any mistake so this is just one marker which they have mentioned in our case we have two markers right one is smoke one is regression so i will just say this is a smoke and this is just a regression fine now let's run this and if you don't want this you can just say uh, this is a smoke test or a smoke scenarios it's totally up to you and you can also mention the same for regression fine that this is regression scenario regression scenarios save this file and let's run it once again okay and this time i will just mention or so i just want to run all and you can see this time we are not getting that warning because we have registered this marker inside this config file which is pytos.ini file yeah very interesting so this is custom markers that we have registered what if i want to use some inbuilt markers which uh, this pytest tells all of this fine so let me show you this but before this anyways we are talking about this ini file right so this ini file you can also add the other uh, flags that we have covered so far so in the previous examples we have used hyphen ra we have also used hyphen k we have used hyphen uh, hyphen hyphen html and json all right so if you want you can keep everything inside this configuration file so that you don't have to mention again and again for example let's say i just want to mention hyphen k or hyphen ra so i just need to use adopts okay just say adopts and now here you can mention all the flags so let's say i just want to mention one flag called hyphen r and a a means i just want all the logs right so right now what is happening it's not giving you all the information right now this time when you run okay let's clear it and let's run it once again so you can see this time we got this additional information because of this hyphen array right now we also discussed that in case if you want uh, html files then we just mention hyphen hyphen html and we also mention our report right so let's say automation dot html or let's say automation report dot html so it means i don't have to pass this every time while running it will take from this configuration file it will just take all these flags and should run so again if i or let me do one thing let me remove everything okay i'm just keeping pytest so it should run all my files all my test functions the moment i hit enter you can see it's collecting total 12 items has been collected right and you can see it has it has also created this automation report.html file which is it should come here yes automation report.html and just mention open this in chrome and you can see we got all that result so basically this ini file is like a configuration file so whatever the standard configurations you want to maintain you don't want to run every time from the command prompt or from this uh, you don't want to pass this additionally flags you can mention inside pytos.ini file and you just need to use one keyword called adopts fine similarly we have set the markers so we are not getting any warning for the markers because we are telling these are our own markers and we want to register it fine makes sense so let's do one thing let's close this and uh, let's uh, use 
this example or maybe I can create another so we'll just copy this file and let's create demo 2 fine and this time I will remove all of this markers I don't need right now because I want to use some custom or a inbuilt markers which is available inside PyTest. So again I will be using uh, PyTest dot mark. Now you can see first of all I have one marker called skip that I want to skip this test fine. Now let's run this and uh, CLS this time or maybe I can you know show you the same thing uh, from our CMD so that it should look little clear. So I'm just going to this directory which is python tutorials now I will type pytest and I will mention the file which is test underscore marker just a second okay it's not coming as auto suggestion no problem because we are not inside this directory so our directory is okay sorry just a second our package is pytest demos right so first let's jump into pytest demos now just type pytest and test underscore marker demo 2 dot py file the moment you hit enter so you can see two are passed because this is pass this is pass which is logout but this particular test function which is login has been skipped can you see this skipped one and it says unconditional skip now if you just see one more thing that the moment i say pytest dot mark and dot skip can you see we have one more thing called skip and skip if so if you want to skip when some conditions are true or false you can skip this particular test case okay for example let's say uh, right now we are using python 3.8.5 if i'm not wrong so let's say my script only runs with python 3.3 .3 or above or let's say 3.8 or above and i want to give the condition if python version below than this then do not execute my test or i can give any other condition let's say if my windows or if the os is not windows then do not run so i can give a conditions here so when you give a conditions okay so you can give a condition first of all and then you have to provide the reason as well then why you are skipping this so in order to give this condition let me show you one small program because this small program will help you to understand what exactly we are trying to achieve here okay so i will just say uh, this file name is get system uh, info okay just a small file here i'm just importing one uh, sys module which is system module now let me just show you one small part the moment i say version info okay and let's run this program so basically it is giving me the python version okay python version information and if you see it says major minor and micro so what exactly it means i'm using 3.8.5 i'm using 3.8.5 version if you want to cross check just type here python space hyphen version okay hyphen hyphen version you can see I'm using 3.8.5 so I just want to give a condition that if my python version is below than this then it should not run so I'm just going to give a condition here that if okay again we need this system right system module so I will say import system which is sys and I will say get sorry dot system or dot version information if this is below 3.8 let's say 3 comma 8 so this is major this is minor and if my version is below than this then only skip and i can also provide the reason reason is mandatory here if you see and i will say python version not supported okay or let's give some condition so just to you know fail this condition i will put 9 so this particular output will be 3.8.5 i'm checking if it is less than 3.9 then skip 
and here I just mentioned Python version not supported okay so let's go back and run it again so I will just use the same thing this is the example that we're using test underscore markers demo 2 dot py and you can see only one test has been passed so this test got skipped it says python version not supported right because of this condition so this is one of the marker this is one of the marker now let me show you one more marker called x fail okay which is pytest dot mark and you can see one thing called x fail so what exactly is x fail let me show you again official documentation so that you will have a clear picture about x fail so just type x fail and you will get their official documentation so x fail means that you expect a test to fail for some reason okay now what exactly we are doing here so they have given a proper example as well suppose you are trying to test a feature or you are trying to test a functionality which is not implemented or maybe some bugs has been not fixed so instead of failing this because pytest understand pass as a different category fail as a different category skip as a different category x fail as a different category and x pass also as a different category so if you want your test inside x fail category you just need to mention x fail and just notice one thing okay forcefully uh, first of all i will just put one assert and i will make this assert true so basically we are giving true and we are giving marker as x fail the moment you run this let's clear this can you see this now we don't have pass category it means it is x passed correct now if you just want uh, x fail make it as false okay and you will notice the moment i run this you will see the test has been failed and it is coming under x fail category so we have skip we have x fail let's quickly add uh, one test which should pass basically because again i just want some pass output as well okay i'm just changing it to let's say test close application and now let's make this as true okay and i will say close the application so this is basically one of the marker x fail and you will see now we have passed we have skipped we also have x fail so x fail will show you when the text fails and it will show you x pass when the test passed but the marker you have marked as x fail clear now what about the other markers let's see so we have pytest dot mark and uh, yes yeah, skip we have done and yeah very important is use fixtures now in order to understand this marker first you need to understand what is fixtures then only you can use it so once we start fixtures again i will be using this marker use fixtures and it's very straightforward and you will enjoy using it for the timing i will park this because we haven't covered this now this is most important part called parameterize so in order to showcase this let me create another file so that you will understand this example in a detailed manner so i will just copy this file and i will maintain here and this time i will say parameters i will remove everything because i don't need as of now so suppose you have a condition or let's say you have a test which you want to run multiple times with different set of data so in that case you can pass parameters okay you can pass list of tuples and each tuple is nothing but a separate record so let me show you let's say uh, i have one method let's say this is test login and i want to log in with 10 different users so one way is like i can run my test every time with new set of data one by one or else i can parameterize this and this data will keep on changing let me write a proper uh, you know marker then you will understand for the time being i will just print whatever values we will be getting so let's use again pytest dot mark dot parameterize so how does this parameterize works ok 
okay let's put mouse over and you can see here I hope I can show you the documentation just a second or maybe I can show you directly here just go back to the documentation and just search this parameters again you will get the official documentation so basically you can see that we need to provide the input expected so this is actually input expected for this example but you can pass n number of parameters here and these parameters you have to pass as a list of tuples so let me show you how it does it work so first of all we need to take number of arguments okay so let's pass two arguments okay one is username second is password these are the two arguments that I want to use in my test so I will just mention here username and password make sure guys it should be same then only it will match so whatever usernames we will be getting we will pass here whatever password we will get will pass here now the second argument is a list now you can pass this list of tuples so let's say I am just creating list here now inside this let me create some tuples so guys those who are completely new to python those who are not familiar what is list what is tuple i will recommend you to watch my previous videos where we discussed about this so i'm creating basically three tuples okay this is one this is two and let me create one more tuple and let me simply give some data okay so let me just give here as selenium this i will pass as web driver this i will give python this i will mark this as pytest let's say this is uh, again my name is mukesh and otwani so basically we have a list this list is having three tuples now each tuple having two records so when you run your test so basically since we are telling that we are going to use pytext marker parameters so these parameters will be passed here username password and it will we can consume it accordingly as of now i will only print but once you start working you have to use this data for your test it can be api test mobile test web automation test it can be anything so i will just print here so that we will get the data fine now let's run it so again i can go here clear everything what is the file name test markers demo parameters so um, parameters and hit enter so you can see now my test executed three times because we have added three records right so first time it executed with selenium web driver which is this second time it executed with python pytest second time it executed with this record and you can see it is also showing you how many parameters it has used to execute this as of now i'm printing guys but yes you can consume this data based on your need as of now our primary focus is to learn pytest and depends on the usage you can use it let me just add one more record here okay this time i will just mention here Just API and this I will say web automation and that's all let's run it again so you can run from the PyCharm as well it is just I'm using uh, command prompt so that you can see some good reports or good console logs right so it's quite easy guys it looks little complicated but it's not so this is how you can do it and let me know if you find any issues or difficulties here now in order to understand the next marker which is fixture right you must have seen the moment i say pytest dot mark dot fixtures or use fixtures so what is fixtures we will see then we will come back to this and we will see how we can use it here now let's talk about what exactly is fixtures how do we use and uh, when we can use this fixtures so again name looks very technical but it's very easy so let's understand with one example suppose you have a test okay inside your test you have some kind of preconditions this preconditions can be anything it can be setting up the browser 
it can be setting up the connection with the server or maybe you are hitting some API so that you should get the data then what you are doing you are just running your test so once this data is ready you can run your test run your test one two three you can put your assertions whatever assertions you need so once your assertions are done maybe you have to run some kind of post conditions okay where you can do the all the cleaning app uh, cleanup activity where you can maybe you have to delete the directory once you are done maybe you have to close the browser right maybe you have to close the database connections and so on it can be anything so instead of writing this for each and every test what we can do we can use fixtures and we can also define fixtures at different i will say scope so before running our test i want to do this and once we are done with the test i want to do this so basically this precondition post conditions will not be part of our test we just need to focus here on the test on the assertion rest everything can be taken care by the fixtures right very easy to use it is just you need to understand few terms and you will be able to use it okay so let me show you how you can use it first of all as usual we need to use pytest and yeah before we use this uh, just open the official documentation as usual so that you can understand just type pytest and search for fixtures again you can see python fixtures they have got a very beautiful documentation and they have given uh, some i will say uh, predefined fixtures which you can use or i will say the built-in fixtures and these are the lists they have given and in case if you want these fixtures here you can simply type pytest hyphen hyphen fixtures and you will be getting the same list here so what I am going to do, I am going to use some fixtures that is required for our automation. But yes, you have the liberty, you can use all these fixtures. So they have again mentioned what exactly fixtures are. So you can see if you break your test into four parts, it's all about arrange, act, assert and clean up. So this arrange and clean up part can be done with the help of fixtures. And yes, they have given how you can implement and everything. So let's follow their documentation. And let's see how we can implement this so let's create some test function let's say I have test 1 and I just want to run some test here I will say test 1 executed again irrespective of what kind of test you are writing concept will remain same so as of now we will focus on the concept so let's say this is my test 2 this is my test 3 and uh, let's run this and now understand that before running this test I want to do some uh, you know activity that start the browser and let's say close the browser these are the just basic stuff that I want to do for each test okay maybe I can copy this and just copy this I will just rename this to test 2 and test 3 now if you want to run this let's go back to our terminal I will say pytest okay then I will write uh, test underscore fixtures dot pyfi so you can see all the tests executed started the browser close the browser start the browser close and all the tests executed so if you see now this code is getting repeated every time right so now I can keep this inside a fixture and this fixture will get executed for each test. How you can do that? Let's say you want to create one, I will say setup. Okay, inside the setup, I just want to mention start browser. That's all. As of now, only the start browser. I will show you why I am not using close browser. Just give me a few minutes and I will show you. Now you want to run this as a fixture. So again, you have to use this decorator pytest dot fixture. Okay, you can see we also have scope, we have parameter, we have auto use and all. As of now, just keep only fixture. And you want to tell your test cases that we already have a fixture called setup. You have to use it. So you just need to copy this fixture name and you need to pass here. So now these tests know that there is a fixture called setup and I have to use it so before running this this will get executed 
so let's run this again and you can see fixture started then your test fixture started and your test and so on right now what about this tear down let's say I just want to close the browser so now here you can use yield okay now if you just want to see this yield okay I hope they have mentioned here so let's search here in the same document you can use yield here which is yield fixture so any tear down code for that fixture is placed after the yield so let's say you want to do any other activity after the test you can keep after yield in our case it is close the browser that's all sorry here that's all and your fixtures are ready so now let's go back and let's run this program from cmd so again i will be typing pytest and what is our file name our file name is test hyphen fixtures so test hyphen fixtures dot py file so it should run our test functions and you will be able to see the output so you can see same thing start browser so start browser test one executed start browser test two and so on now if you see this print statement is not coming after yield okay so sometimes if you don't see this part you just need to add hyphen s and let's run it once again so as you can see now it is giving you proper output start browser test one executed then after this yield it is executing close browser same thing start browser test two executed close browser and so on so this is how this fixture works so if you want to have some setup activities keep here and if you want to have some tear down or cleanup activity keep after yield okay just to show you uh, one example with selenium what i will do i will just run three test cases here and after each test i will start the browser and close the browser so what we will be doing now let's do one thing uh, let's use web driver so i will be using control space yeah so let's use web driver and i want to invoke let's say chrome okay so i will say chrome and now i will be using uh, that web driver manager so i will be using chrome driver manager dot install so basically it will have the drivers with me that we will be passing here and it should start my driver right so this i want to do and let's say i want to maximize as well so i will say maximize window sorry maximize window and once we are done with our task i just want to close this browser so i will say driver.quit now guys if you notice this driver having the scope till this function right i want to access this driver here as well here as well and here as well so now let's say I just want to open driver dot get. Okay, let's say I just want to open one application. This application can be anything. Uh, basically, you can have your real test cases here. I'm just opening three different uh, applications and you can have the real test here. I'm just opening the browser and closing the browser because this is just fixture demo, not selenium demo. So basically it will start Facebook, then Google and then Gmail. But the problem here is that driver is not accessible so we need to make this driver as global so that we can access in all these test functions right so let's create one a driver and i will keep this by default none and i will define this driver as global so i will just write one keyword called global and i will say driver that's all now let's run this and you will see the execution so again i will go back clear the console and let's run our fixture so again i'm running same and this time i don't need this hyphen as because anyways browser will close so we'll get to know so let's run now you can see it is collected three item because we have three test and uh, it is taking some time because now it has to download the driver start the browser do the activity and close the browser earlier we just had print statements it was running pretty straightforward now you can see browser is coming up first facebook then it is closing and you can see this small green symbol it means it's passed then second is google and you can see after every test it is also closing my browser right it means now this yield is also executing and we got the result 
that all the tests got passed and our fixture is also working fine so it's very straightforward just try from your end and let me know if you find any issue now let's also discuss a very interesting point again that how you will run your test in parallel mode so as of now you can see uh, what is happening it is running this test first then this and then this right so what is happening it's running my test sequentially but let's say if i have multiple tests or i have a big test suite which i want to run parallelly because because we don't have much time or we want to reduce the overall execution time so we want to run test in parallel mode how we can do again thanks to python and pytest we already have a predefined i will say package available you just need to install that package and you can start using it okay so let me show you first of all which package you have to use how to install and how you just need to run it so again let's go back and search for pytest distributed pytest distributed okay so the moment you say pytest distributed you will be getting one package called pytest hyphen x dst which is distribution so basically this particular package will help you to run your test in parallel mode and uh, as you can see it's very straightforward you just need to install this package so let's do one thing let's go back to terminal and uh, let's do pip install pytest hyphen x dst it will take few seconds and it will install this plugin for you sorry this package and you can see this package is already installed for me so it says requirement already satisfied in your case it will download and if you see so what exactly we are doing speed up your test by sending test to multiple cpus to send test to multiple cpus you just need to use one flag called hyphen n or you can say this is number of processes so this is what exactly we are going to do we are just going to say hyphen n and number of processes that we want to use fine so let's do one thing uh, let's use three processes so anyways we have to use pytest right then we have to provide which file in our case it is test hyphen fixtures right now i will be using hyphen n and since i have three test cases i will be using number of processes three the moment you hit enter okay just see this and you can see we got workers right okay one two three and all the workers are up and running and you can see three tests are running parallelly this is i guess for facebook this is for google and this is for gmail all are running parallelly so google opened and closed very fast and remaining two took some time and you can see right so all the tests are running in parallel mode we didn't do much it is just we executed number of processes to two sorry three and it started working so if i go back again so this is how our session started it identified the root directory and it identified the pytest.ini file that we discussed and it took all these plugins that we have used we have used this html plugin also we use this x distribution as well and these three workers started and it is running our test so that's all from my side on pytest so let me know if you find any issue or if you need any help let me know in the comment section or you can send me an email as well and i will try my best to answer if you need part 2 or if you just need some more information about pytest let me know i will try to create one more video on this so in case if you are new to this channel guys then make sure you subscribe this channel please share this channel with others who are looking for test automation or python or simple java programming language i have so many videos on that and yeah that's all for my side thank you so much guys and i will see you in the next video have a nice day bye bye